Hi everybody, welcome, welcome back to the channel. This is Tamur and this is my channel, The Cloud Security Guy. Uh, a special video today, like less of a video, more of an announcement. I've just launched my new course on Generative AI. And this is like, a, in this video, I'm just gonna put a free preview and like a free coupon for the first 100 students. So if you can, if you're interested in this course, uh, it'll be free for the first 100 users. I've just launched it today. Already it has four students, which is nice. Well, that's really nice. But um, I made this course specially to talk about generative AI, you know, things like chat GPT, things like large language models, and what are the risks around them. So I've tried to cover basically all the risks which are there, you know, things like prompt injections and how to secure them. And you can check it out. The preview is free. And if you are one of the first hundred students, you can actually get the whole course for free. Please, a kind request if you can leave a review also. That helps a lot with these new courses. So in this video, I'm just gonna put the new, like uh, uh, the preview of the course, so you can check it out also. And in, in if interested, you can check in the comment section. There'll be a free coupon. Thank you very much, guys. I hope you enjoy this course, if you get it. And let me have have some review, have, let me have some feedback. Thank you. Hi, everyone. Welcome to this course, which is the Viscan Security Masterclass for Generative AI and Large Language Models, LLMs. I'm your instructor, Tamur Lal, and I'll be uh, teaching you this course. Now about this course, guys, just a quick background. Uh, after years and years, it seems that AI is now like, you know, it's reached a sort of a tipping point. Now everybody is talking about it. It's captured the imagination of everyone from like students who are writing their essays to leaders at the world's largest tech companies, you know, like Amazon, Google, Microsoft, everybody is talking about AI. It's so much excitement is there around the possibilities about AI, what, what AI tools are, how they are unlocking, what what exactly these tools are and the risks of these tools, especially generative AI, is still not widely understood. So that is the reason I made this class, guy, because I wanted to like go over the key risks, the security risks, the issues that are present in generative AI and LLM, and hopefully to help you how to teach you how to mitigate these risks, how to help you uh, implement generative AI safely and securely within your company. So let's take a look at what this course is going to teach you, right? I'm not going to tell you that implement XYZ tool and then everything is going to be hunky-dory. No, that, it doesn't work like that. So what we're going to do is we're going to start with an overview of generative AI and then we're going to talk about the key uh, security risks of generative AI, okay? Like I said, it's not about implementing tools because security of generative AI doesn't exist in a vacuum, right? We need to implement a proper risk framework. We're going to explore the potential risks and threats associated with using generative AI in a company, in an enterprise setting. We're gonna focus on the technical aspects and the risk aspects that, that originate from using generative AI. We're gonna also discuss about threat modeling, how we can use threat modeling to find out the risks associated with models, okay? Engaging like the teams and how, whether you should use public or private LLMs or generative AI. And then we're gonna like give you some, uh, go over some uh, actionable recommendations for how you can take a comprehensive approach to like develop a policy, develop a framework, implement those technical controls along with the sample policy so that you can be sure that you're using generative AI in a safe and secure way, okay? So who's this course for? Like, okay, I've told, told you what this course is gonna be teaching you. So who is this course for? Well, first of all, it's for like anybody in security because the security professionals can be quite worried about generative AI, how what's happening, what's going on, right? It's also for CISOs, uh, chief technology officers, CROs, people at a senior level, and they want to understand because there's so much news about generative AI, right? Everybody is talking this and that. So much news of people are being bombarded with. It can get difficult to find out where to focus. It's also for risk management and governance professionals who are concerned about this new technology, AI professionals, and, and lastly, anyone interested in generative AI. It doesn't matter if you're just an IT, just a risk professional, compliance, legal. I've made this course generally. Uh, deliberately I've made it high level. I don't want to like bore you with like technical details of like the underlying libraries and all that, because honestly, you don't need to know those for securing generative AI. Okay. And like, so what are the prerequisites for this course? Like who, what do you need to know? You need to know, have a basic knowledge of AI and machine learning. If you don't even know that, don't worry. I have a small primer on that. Uh, you need to have like a basic knowledge of cyber security and risk. You have to have a desire to learn. You want to know about this thing, right? So a deep knowledge of AI is not needed, okay? You don't need to know Python libraries. You don't need to know the underlying like statistical models. You don't need to know how neural networks work. No, honestly, for securing generative AI, none of these things are a prerequisite. You just need to understand what generative AI is, 
how it's working and then we can go over the risks and how to mitigate those risks okay so about me so i've told you what this course is for and who this course is for so you might be thinking okay who is this guy and why should i be listening to him uh, talking for a few hours about generative ai so just a quick introduction about myself my name is taimur islal i'm a multi award winning cyber security leader i have over 21 years of experience so i'm quite old unfortunately <laughs> so i am a speaker and instructor of cyber security topics i'm also a career coach i help people in their cyber security career i have a youtube channel the cloud security guy okay on which i talk about cloud security ai and general cyber security career advice i'm a three times author i've written over three books on cyber security uh, like so i've been published quite a few i'm there on a lot of websites okay but i really like to teach and spread knowledge about cyber security in a fun and engaging way you know teach, uh, teach you about these things so these are my books i've written a book on ai governance and cyber security that's not focused just on genai this is the, that is more like high level about what are the risks of genai like uh, ai and machine learning okay and i have got another one for zero trust for beginners which is about the zero trust methodology how you can implement like like the nist standard for zero trust within a company from a completely beginner standpoint okay you don't need to know in depth knowledge of zero trust okay i'm there on medium also i'm there on linkedin um, there's my youtube channel so you can connect with me on all of those I, i always love to hear from people who've taken my courses so it would be great if you can connect with me let me know how what you felt about it okay so uh why should you care okay you might be thinking okay this all sounds exciting why should i care about generative ai i am in cyber security my job is going well i am a risk professional everything is going well why should i care about this it seems like a hypey thing okay so there are three stages of ai acceptance which i always say these are the three stages i have seen people going when it comes to ai there the first people on the left is those people who are just scared that ai is going to take their job but they are too scared and they too disinterested uh, and they don't really want to find out like they, they're just scared about it they said okay man this is going to take my job and they're just miserable right they don't want to know or they don't care about using ai for their advantage okay the second one is also worried uh, he's not scared but he's worried that uh, like uh, they, they're worried about so much things have changed since chat gpt came out in a matter of months all the industries have changed right but they're just worried about it they're not taking any action they they they're worried about it but they don't want to be proactive and find out okay what can we do about it right and the last one is on the right with those who are eager like you if you've taken this course who are eager and they are enthusiastic and they've decided to deep dive they realize that technology keeps changing the world is changing it's it doesn't matter how much you care about what happened earlier the world is changing right so you need to be proactive and keep up skilling keep learning so they want to learn how to use ai for their benefit and how to secure it because they see the potentials which are there right so when i talk about generative ai before we deep dive into it so i want to be very careful that generative ai is a game changer for this in security it's not hype it is going to be a massive like change when it comes to risk in cyber security at the same time like uh, its potential must be balanced with the risks right uh, because uh, there are also a lot of risks within generative ai so what can gen ai do it it is a massive boost to productivity provided you use it the right way within your risk and security activities it can give you a huge boost it can take away a lot of save you a huge amount of time right security data terabytes of data can become accessible to use via simple natural language prompts just write something in simple language and it can generate you a complete security report right you can even do automation which we going to talk about later like even the next wave of generative ai is going to move away from just like writing you stuff and drawing diagrams it's going to do automations also right you can do risk predictions by analyzing huge amounts of data you can actually ask generative ai okay what's going to happen based on what this what do you think right and it also lowers the bar for entry because it lowers the technical bar needed to enter generative ai think about like if somebody joins a company they need a mentor to walk them through right or they somebody who is new to cyber security and they need somebody to teach them the basics instead of going through like a person or something they can just talk with an ai like an llm like a chatbot within your company or within like chat gpt just ask it questions and it can actually teach you so you can upskill much faster because you can tailor the responses to you right so all this potential is there at the same time like i said attackers are also very very fast to jump on the genai bandwagon right they are also not stupid they know just how revolutionary this thing is and how they can misuse it okay so we are going to be seeing new types of threats which were not there before which we're going to talk about generative ai itself has risks which need to be mitigated right we're going to see a boost to social engineering attacks because a uh, 
threat actors are going to use generative AI to further improve their social engineering attacks, right? We're going to be seeing deep fake scams like video, fake videos, which are going to take social engineering to the next level. We're going to talk about mutating malware, which is malware, which uses LLMs and Gen AI to keep changing and evade even the most recent EDR tools. And like I said, again, the same thing which I talked about for cyber security, it applies to cyber criminals also, the lowered bar for entry because generative AI makes things so easy. Even the people who don't know much about cyber crime, they can start jumping and start doing stuff. Okay. So it is a game changer, right? And it has happened very, very fast, unfortunately. To give you an idea, like ChatGPT, just to show you how quickly generative AI is being adopted, uh, ChatGPT reached 100 million users in two months, right? Faster than any technology has, like ever, okay? Compared to traditional AI and machine learning technologies, generative AI is much easier to use, right? It's so intu intuitive and interactive. You can just make simple prompts, right? And you can get those results, okay? And keep prompting, you get more and more polished results. So it's like a chat interface that makes it so easy. It's accessible to everybody, right? Like uh, many of the generative AI technologies we are talking about, they are free or very low cost. So it's open to the public and accessible to anybody with a low internet, like a, with an internet connection. It's very easy to use. So it's designed to be used by people of any positions because you're using natural language. And uh, speed and agility. The, the, the system can produce like information, source code, like a summary, summarize articles, right? And exposing through APIs, they can integrate with third-party applications. We've always seen Microsoft talking about how they're going to be integrating like all those tools, security co-pilot and all that. We're going to talk about that. So the thing is, the reality is, the future is generative AI is going to, be, going to become ubiquitous. It means that it's going to be like this with all your business enterprise tools. So you need to understand the risks and, and how to mitigate them, right? So this is what I talked about why you should care because generative AI is evolving at a massive rate. Uh, it's changing very, very fast, evolving very, very fast. It's becoming a key part of most applications like I talked about. And by becoming a part to most applications, it's gonna be proximity to your sensitive data like emails, uh, like CRM applications, chatbots. They will have access to your backend applications. And new risks are coming out like prompt injections, hallucinations, which cybersecurity people are not aware about. So ignoring it is not an option if you're serious about cybersecurity, okay? So, and for a project for this, because if you don't apply the knowledge, which I'm teaching you here, honestly, you're gonna forget everything, right? So for the project for this course, I want you to write a sample generative AI policy. We're gonna talk about what are the things you can include in it. And based on that things which I teach you, I need you to write a generative AI policy and share with me the results. So I can review and give you feedback also. So that's gonna be your project. So I hope you understood this guys, the rise of AI, like I said, generative AI, it's a major game changer for businesses. And it's going to allow so much content to be created, okay? And it's going to transform how companies operate. Uh, tasks are going to get automated, which humans used to do. It's going to increase efficiency, productivity, and of course, it's going to open up new risks. So I'm very, very excited. Thank you for taking this course. So let's talk about, uh, let's get started in the next lesson. We're going to talk about generative AI, what it is, okay? How it's different from like your other types of AI. And then we're going to talk about the risks which are there. Thank you very much, guys. And I'll see you in the next lesson. Hi everyone, now welcome to the second introductory chapter of this course, which is Introduction to Generative AI. I wanna set the scene before we move on to say talking about large language models or the risks, or the risks and security issues within Generative AI. So let's talk a little bit about Generative AI. What is it? Okay, so uh, I wanna talk about at a high level first, which is AI. So what is artificial intelligence? Now, unless you've been living, living under a rock for the past couple of years, you would have heard of AI, right? AI is a science devoted to making machines think and act like human beings. Okay. What does that mean? We'll, we'll, I'll find out shortly. Now, AI is basically, it has multiple subsets. Okay. Many, many fields, but the most popular application of AI is machine learning. So machine learning is a subset of AI that focuses on a specific goal. It, we, could, we want computers to be able to perform tasks without the need of explicit programming. Okay. How do we do that? What we do is we feed computers data and they learn to become better and better at evaluating and acting on that data over time. So if you are like a machine learning expert, you're gonna take a system and gonna feed like image classification. So supposing we want a computer to classify images, right? We are not gonna feed it the image of every single thing on the planet, right? No, what you're gonna do is you're gonna train it. You're gonna input images and ask the computer to classify each image. And if it gets it right, you confirm it. 
If it gets it wrong, you correct it. So you keep on doing it. And what happens is this model becomes better and better over a time. And over time, it hones the model into something that is able to accurately handle new types of data. Why? Because it learned all of the stuff which is there, okay? So this is how at a very high level, how machine learning works. Now, within machine learning, there is another very deep topic, which is deep learning. Now, machine learning we talked about is about computers being able to perform tasks without the need of explicit programming. But the computer still thinks and acts like machine, right? So their ability to perform like complex tasks, gathering data from an image or video, for example, it's still not as good as a human being, what a human being can do, right? So deep learning, it introduces a very sophisticated approach to machine learning. Why? Because it's specifically modeled after the human brain. You know how we think, we don't think like a machine, right? We have different thoughts, different feelings, different impressions are stronger, some impressions are weaker. So this is how it works. Complex, multi-layered, like deep neural networks are built. And what they do is they allow data to be passed between them in highly connected ways. And the result is like a non-linear transformation and handling of data. And it becomes better and better. It's, it takes like a tremendous volumes of uh, to feed and build such a system. But it can, once you've done it, it can almost interact without any human intervention once it's there. So deep learning is a very, very advanced application of machine learning. And this is where generative AI comes in. So what is generative AI? So, so I mean, I'm sure you must have heard of generative AI already because of chat GPT and all the popularity that has happened. So generative AI refers to a class of AI uh, techniques and models that are designed to create or generate new content. This can be like images, text, music, even videos, right? Unlike the old models, AI models, which we talked about, usually they are trained to recognize or classify existing data, right? Generative AI can generate new data. It's capable of producing original content that resembles the data they were trained on. So this can be text, images, music, audio, and they use deep learning algorithms, okay? And these models learn from very large data sets. And how do they do it? They capture the patterns and the statistical relationships in the data. Once they are trained enough, they can start generating new content. For example, in the case of image generation, now like a mid journey, a generative AI model can be trained on a large collection of images, right? And then it can learn to generate new images that resembles the training data. Similarly, like with large language models, they can start to generate text, paragraphs, entire stories, okay? So you, you can imagine the applications it has in so many fields like art, design, entertainment, even scientific research. You can generate realistic images, human like dialogue, music, medical like medicine and so much you have to understand but very important uh generative ai models are not perfect they can still sometimes produce inaccurate or nonsensical outputs and we'll talk more about that and you also have to take into ethical considerations because people can misuse it and we see like things like deep fake fake news all those sort of things can be used okay so how does it work so we've talked about already if you want to like uh, I don't want to dive too deep into like uh, the underlying technology because honestly, you don't need to know it. I'll be very honest with you. If you want to mitigate the risks which are there with generative AI, you don't need to like deep dive into the underlying models and how they work because a high level understanding is enough. But still, I want to talk a little bit about it. So generative AI uses a type of deep learning called uh, generative adversarial networks to create new content. So it's very simple. Uh, again, it is it's like it has like a generator that creates new content and a discriminator that evaluates the data so they work together what happens is the generator keeps improving its outputs it keeps creating data and the discriminator tries to classify it okay so over time uh what do you call uh it, it keeps trying to like, like both of them are working together and they're like acting like adversaries right because the generator is trying to create data that tricks the discriminator and the discriminator is trying to uh, accurately classify this data so over time, the generator learns to create more and more realistic content that can fool the discriminator. But the discriminator is getting better at distinguishing the content. So this is the underlying technology for like fake, like, you know, deep fakes and everything. So there's enormous potential for GAN technologies. And this is usually how uh, generative AI works. Okay. And we're going to talk about like, uh, what are the, some of the implications which are there? So this is basically at a high level. This is how generative AI works, right? Uh, so if you look at it, if we collect the data, right? You have a large data set of uh, examples that can be like audio, music, speech. Okay, for example, in image generation, a data set of diverse images will be there. A text generation, it would be a huge amount of text documents. Then the model would be trained, okay? The generative AI model 
would be trained on the collective data set using deep learning algorithms like we talked about GANs and using neural networks they would try to understand this data learn the pattern it understands the statistical patterns present in the data set and it captures how the data the distribution of data and it allows it to understand and generate new types of data that resembles the data on which it was trained on so this is then you what you do is once it's been trained now you can prompt it you can ask it to generate new data and result of that is the new content which gets generated and of course this gets improved over time right the generative AI model can undergo further training and refinement to improve its performance. The more diverse data set you give it, you know, and the, you more, the more advanced techniques you use, the better it will get. So it really, uh, remember the underlying techniques may differ, but at a high level, this is how all generative AI works. And honestly, from the security and risk perspective, uh, this is all you need to know at a high level because the security risks are like usually on top of generative AI. It's not because of the underlying deep learning algorithm. It has more to do with the data and how it's, the like the, the prompts and what sort of underlying ecosystem is there. So we're going to talk about that in the next section. So impact of generative AI. So what has generative AI done? I mean, if you've been like uh, following the news after chat GPT came out, I mean, sure, you must have understood, right? First of all is improved productivity. Nearly all the industries have been impacted, right? Whether you are in writing, uh, marketing, advertising, code generation, developers are saying we might lose their jobs and everything, right? So it, the productivity has gone up considerably. Uh, but at the same time, of course, people have concerns that generative AI and automation is going to lead to job displacements and employment. Why? Uh, because machines will become capable of performing tasks that humans used to do, right? They're worried that the increasing use of AI will lead to a shrinking job market, especially in things like industry manufacturing, customer service, data entry, right? And it does. It does have the potential to disrupt several industries like advertising because you can create new advertising based on existing ones, right? Art and design, you can generate uh, like very realistic images, entertainment, you can create new video, all of those things are there. But you have to balance it. There are many, many benefits that will come that will positively impact the workers and the economy also. So it's just like any other technology, but it has a, the impact is much, much greater. Okay. So it, in the short term, generative AI will have positive impacts on the job market because repetitive and time consuming things human beings can offload to a gen ai but there are security and risk implications also of course which we're going to talk about because there is a huge potential for misuse of this technology also by cyber criminals by malicious elements and we're going to see about that how how that can happen and what we can do about it okay so what are the popular use cases i mean i'm sure you must have seen these generative ai can generate various types of data depending on the model and its training data you can generate images, right? It can generate new images that resemble the training data if you use mid journey. So it's very powerful in how it can do text. Anybody who's used chat GPT knows about this. It can generate text, sentences, paragraphs, articles, uh, pretty much anything you want. It can generate poems, right? And uh, it can generate code. If you use Copilot, it can literally be used as a coding assistant and generate very, very excellent high quality code. It can generate music. It can compose new music pieces like melodies and all that video. It can generate video sequences by extending a series of images or combining or even generate new ones. This is where deep fake technology comes in, which we've been seeing out. And of course, the one of the experimental things which is still happening, they're still working on it, which is autonomous AI, which is when you prompt it to do something, you don't even need, to, it's not going to just sit and write. It's going to actually carry out that task. So things like co security co-pilot, which we're going to talk about later. So this is like the end evolution of AI. We're going to have autonomous AI which you don't really, it's, it's going to become like a virtual assistant, like a mini cyber security analyst. You can just tell it to do things. It's going to do it. So this is just how powerful generative AI is going to be. Okay. So that was a lot guys, but uh, I hope I, I didn't mean to scare you or make you depressed, but it is the new world we are living in. Generative AI is here. It's going to stay. It's going to be using for creating new and new types of content. It's going to have a massive impact on industries and society as a whole, without any doubt. We're going to see text, audio, video, code, and even tasks get automated. It's going to have a positive, a huge positive impact on the job market because new jobs will also get created, not just job losses are there, but it might also have a negative impact as people try to misuse uh, generative AI and the potential it has. So, and we're going to talk about in detail in the following sections when we talk about the risks and the possible security issues that can happen. Okay. So, okay. Thank you guys. And I'll see you in the next section. We will talk about large language models and I'll see you in the next section.